This first one says, Greetings, Dr. Craig. I would like to replace the Kalam cosmological argument syllogism, or outline, with this one to show that it is flawed. Premise 1. Everything that comes to exist from nothing has a cause. Premise 2. The universe came to exist from nothing. Conclusion. The universe must have a cause. Now we can see that the argument fails because we don't know that the first premise is true. Indeed, quantum mechanics suggests that strict causal relationships break down at the quantum level. We also don't know if premise 2 is true. So therefore, the Kalam cosmological argument fails because it changes the meaning of begins to exist midstream and hides it in the language. Well, quite a mouthful there. <laughs> yeah, he, he thinks that both the premises are false and that the argument commits a fallacy of equivocation. So it's, it's a pretty bad argument, <laughs> according to him. Okay. Well, let me first say that I don't think his revisions do anything to elucidate the argument. Whether you add the phrase from nothing really doesn't materially affect the argument in any way. And in fact, I would agree that his argument is a sound argument, that anything that begins to exist from nothing has a cause, that the universe began to exist from nothing, therefore the universe has a cause. I think that both of the premises are true and that the conclusion logically follows. Now, his refutation is the old appeal to quantum mechanics to say that in quantum mechanics, things begin to exist from nothing, and that's just patently false. Uh, in the first place, uh, there are at least 10 different physical interpretations of the mathematical equations of quantum mechanics. And some of these physical interpretations are fully deterministic. It is only in some of these, principally the Copenhagen interpretation, that events are said to occur without determinate causes. But that's only one out of at least 10 different interpretations of quantum mechanics and nobody knows which physical interpretation is correct. So, in fact, it's not a successful counterexample to the first premise. The, it does nothing to prove that even quantum events can begin to exist from nothing. But secondly, in any case, it is simply not true that quantum events begin to exist from nothing. These events are the result of, of fluctuations in the quantum vacuum which is not nothing. When these virtual particles, for example, form in the vacuum, they are fluctuations of the energy that is locked up in the vacuum. It is a sea of fluctuating energy governed by physical laws, having a rich physical structure. There is nothing in quantum mechanics, even on the inter indeterministic uh, interpretations, which would suggest that things literally come into being from nothing. So it's not a successful counterexample on at least those two counts. Now, as for the universe beginning to exist from nothing, again, I would just beg to disagree. Speaking again scientifically, in the standard Big Bang model, the universe most certainly does come to exist from nothing in the sense that you arrive at a space-time singularity at some time in the finite past before which literally nothing existed. That is to say, there was not anything prior to the singularity. So there's no doubt that on the standard model, the universe began to exist from nothing in the sense that it has a beginning before which there was nothing. There was not anything prior to it. Now the question then really is, is the standard model correct in this prediction? And I think theorists have been able to show that by marrying quantum mechanics with general relativity, we can construct models of the universe which can avoid the initial singular point uh, so that the universe doesn't begin to exist at a singular point in the past. But none of these models can be extended to the infinite past. They still are finite in their past duration, and therefore the universe on these models still has to begin to exist uh, and therefore is created out of nothing, even if it doesn't come into being at a singularity of infinite space-time curvature and, and infinite density. So I do think that both of the premises of the argument are plausibly true. Now, does it commit an equivocation in the word begins to exist? Well, not at all. We can give content 
to the notion of beginning to exist, we can say that x begins to exist at t, sometime t, uh, if and only if x exists at t and there is no time prior to t at which x exists. I'll repeat that. x begins to exist at t if and only if x exists at t and there's no time prior to t at which x exists. That defines a univocal sense of begins to exist, which works in that argument and would show that there's simply no fallacy of equivocation going on. So I think his refutation is really quite without merit.